Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we are painting the foxglove flower. And I have to be honest, if you saw my Instagram story a while back, I was talking about how the foxglove flower gave me like the, the heebie-jeebies. There's just so many holes in it and there's a word for that phobia, that one. Um, but yeah, so people have been requesting it, so I'm just gonna paint it anyway, and maybe we won't make it so holy, <laughs> but that's what we're doing, so let's jump right in. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through my materials. I'm using Arches Watercolor Paper Cold Pressed, my Windsor Newton Professional Watercolors on my palette, my Princeton Snap Brushes in a size six and a 12, and I have my water, paper towel, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we are gonna be painting the foxglove flower, and we're just gonna jump right in. So we're not gonna make this too detailed. We're gonna do kind of a mix of a slightly detailed but more loose version of it. So pick your color. You can do this in any color that you like. They come in many different colors. I'm gonna probably do pink because I have a pink problem, apparently. Um, so I'm just going to mix up. Actually, we're going to do more of a muted pink. So I'm going to take my permanent rose. I'm just going to lay a bunch on my palette. Then I'm going to take a bit of hooker's green and just add a bit to it. So it's not as bright. Okay. It just mutes it just a little like that. Okay. So now we are going to take a light wash of it and I'm just dipping my brush in my water to release some of the pigment from my brush and make it a bit lighter and we're gonna start. Okay, so they're kind of like these cone shapes. Um, Trying to figure out the best way to describe it. Let's start with a smaller one up here. So let's do kind of like a squiggly circle and that's gonna be like the inside. And then you're gonna go up and down like that. So that's the kind of shape you want. I'm just gonna release some of that pigment and just fill it in, okay? And we do that squiggly the circle just to kind of give ourselves a reference for later. I'll show you what I mean later. Okay, let's do another one. We'll do one to this side. So do your squiggly circle, squiggly circle, and then your cone shape. It's pointing a different direction, and fill it in. Okay. Let's have another one right here, maybe. So squiggly circle, like that. And then a little cone shape. Okay, and now my paper doesn't dry too fast because it's Arches Cold Press, so I can do a couple at a time. But if your paper dries really fast, what you wanna go in and do is grab a bit more pigment before it dries too fast and just add a little bit to the top of the cone and then where that squiggly circle would have been. Okay, just gonna add a little bit like that, okay? So then we're gonna keep going. Let's go this way now, so squiggly circle. And if you try, if you can, try and make them a light wash. I think those were a little bit darker than I intended, but that's okay. Because you want that, the dark areas to stand out a bit more. And also what I want you to keep in mind is that these cone parts are going to be connecting all to one stock. So you kind of want them in a line. I know it may not look like that right now, but it will after. So have an imaginary line there. So we're gonna have a stock coming down the middle. So have the cone part, the tip of the cone part, facing in towards where that stock is gonna be. So actually it might be a better idea to just do the, the pointed part the top of the, my, I can't speak. Da, 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 da. So the cone part here, and then do the squiggly circle. Whatever works best for you, okay? However you best visualize it. Okay, like that. I'm gonna do another one. This one could be behind that one a little bit. Like that. Have another one out here. that and then 
let's just do one more here. Okay, so mine are still wet and you kind of want them to be still wet while we do this next part. So if you have to do the next part sooner than the way I'm doing them, totally do that. I feel like I'm not making much sense today. I'm gonna grab some green. I just have some, I think it's perlene green and sap green mixed in here. Just gonna grab green. And we're gonna touch the top of those cones a bit. So make sure you don't have a lot of water dripping off your brush or pigment. So just run it on the tip of your jar bit and you're just gonna do kind of the part that encases the flower. So just, I like to touch the flower a bit so it bleeds in. Now these ones are starting to dry, so it's not actually happening all that much, but you'll see when I do the ones down below, they're gonna be bleeding a bit more. Okay, and if they do bleed, that's great. If they don't, that's great too. Whatever works, whatever you like better. Again, just try not to use too much pigment or water on your brush, because then the green will just kind of mix way too much into that pink and it could take it over. And if that happens, you can just mop it up with your paper towel and then try again, okay? Like that. Okay, now we are going to do the stem. So I'm gonna do a stem coming from here, right down the middle, like that. And I'm just gonna have these connecting to that stem, like that, okay? like so. And then as we get closer to the top, there's actually gonna be some buds. So I'm just gonna do a little bit here like that. And we'll do a little bit of pink ones coming, popping out of there. And then as they get closer to the top, they'll just be green. So just little, almost like teardrop, little leaf shapes closer to the top. Okay. And I'm actually gonna go and take my darker green, this perlene green, and I'm just gonna run that dark green up the center, touch some of those buds and the tips of where it's holding the flower, just to give it a little bit of depth and shadow. Okay, and then just bring it down like that. I'm gonna grab a bit of that pink and do some of these buds here. I'm gonna try not to touch the green too much. Like so. Okay, and while we're waiting for the flower part to dry, we're gonna do some leaves. So I'm just gonna grab whatever green I have in my palette to start, a lighter wash of it. And I'm gonna do a little stem coming up from here. And I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a nice long line there. Then I'm gonna come around one side of the line, come in. The other side, I'm gonna go behind this little flower. And we're just gonna color it in. Try and go around that flower. Make sure it's not wet so it's not seeping into it. That was touched a little, it's all good. that. I'm going to grab a bit more color. I have a bit of sap green here. I'm going to go down that middle. And I think I'm just going to do some lines like this, thick lines, just to get kind of a feel for the texture on the leaf. Like that. Then I'm going to grab some of that dark green. I'm going to touch the base. I'm gonna go around it, down the center, around the other side, and then I can go over some of those lines again, just to give it a bit of texture. Like that. Okay, now let's do another leaf over here. Maybe this one could be a bit more of a side view. 
so it's not as thick. You can have it curve a little. Let's fill it in. Like that. Do that line up the middle again. And then the line's coming out. Grab my darker green. Again around the sides. I think I'm gonna put a bit more darkness over there because it's like it's folded a bit. Oops. Up the center and then those lines again. Like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so now we're just gonna wait for it to completely dry and then we will do the detail on the flower parts. Okay, so now that it's dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same pink color, just a light wash of it, and we're gonna re like draw with our paintbrush that squiggly circle. So just a very, very light wash, or you can even just do it with water. Make sure you don't have too, too much water. Just draw that, that squiggly circle, and then you're gonna take a bit more pigment, and you're just gonna top, tap the top of that squiggly circle. So it gives it some depth, like there's a hole in this flower and that's the inside, okay? So I'm gonna wash some of that off. Do our squiggly circle with water or a very light wash if it's just easier for you to see. I'm gonna do two at a time. Get more pigment. Tap the top, okay? You want the lower part to be lighter and right in here to be darker. If you need to mix a bit more paint, you can do that too. Our permanent uh, rose and our green. Okay. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a bit of a puddle on this one. And when you have a puddle and you try and drop in color, it doesn't take well. So I'm going to dry off my brush. Pick up some of that water with my brush, dry it, pick some of it up, dry it, okay? That's one option if you ever have a puddle like that and you don't know how to get rid of it, okay? Because you want it to bleed nicely and not just sit on top of the puddle, okay? I'm try and do a couple more at a time. Last two. And I'm just tapping a little bit more just to make sure it's a bit darker. Okay. Okay, so we need to wait for those to dry. And if you want to do a bit more detail on your leaves, you can. I'm just going to grab a bit more green. And I think I might just add a bit of shadow. Wash off my brush, dry it off, blend it out a bit. Very rough kind of chunky shadows. Okay, maybe under this one, because there would be a shadow being cast by that flower. Okay, wash off my brush, dry it. Oops, a bunch of water just flew in there. Grab a bit more dark green. Just drop it in there. Okay. 
You could always just, you could always do the lines again if you want, if you want to make it a bit more detailed, but you don't have to, however you want to do it. Okay, and then we're just gonna wait for those to fully dry and we'll come back. Okay, so now that it's dry, we are gonna do the last final bit of detail. So let's take a bit more of this color. We're just gonna make the same color as the flowers, but a bit darker, so just more paint. That's too brown. So I'm gonna grab a bit more pink. There we go, so we get a nice muted dark pink. And we're just gonna wash off our brush dry a little bit, take a little bit, and you're just gonna do some dots coming from the inside. We have these weird dotted patterns inside, which I'm actually not too fond of, but <laughs> it's kind of its signature bit of this flower. So just really loose dots. Like that. Now, a lot of the dots actually are surrounded by white areas too. So what you can do is get some white ink if you like. Hold on, we'll do that in a second. I might actually just grab a bit of light color and just kind of, am I gonna outline this? Mm. I don't know. You know what we might do? Take a really light wash, like a really light wash of your pink. And you can do a couple lines like with your brush just to give and a bit of texture, like really light wash. Almost like a dry brush. Like that, okay. And the last but not least, if you have white ink, um, you don't have to do this step, but if you do have white ink and you wanna give this part a try, okay, I use Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink, but you could, if you have a white gel pen or white gouache, whatever you wanna use, and you can just go around some of those dots. like so and there you go that's it there is your foxglove flower thank you all so much for watching my video i really hope you liked it and i hope you learned something don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on instagram and facebook for even more have a great day guys bye